What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Friday Night Live. Tonight we are building a custom truck. Brian Sherwood sent me a box of parts again and this week we're building a custom Capra using uh, some Vanquish parts for the axles transmission and a super shafty super Capra, Chupa Capra, which is kind of, it's like a milled cage. So that is what our plan is for tonight. I opened the box just before the stream though. And I have found a, a number of interesting things. One is that uh, a lot of this is already together. So this may end up going much faster than normal. So yeah, we're gonna see how long this goes. This is a 2.2 build. Looks like some Pitbull Berserkers that we're using. And a number of the other parts, they're all just kind of wrapped in paper. So we'll get all that out and see what we've got going on here. I haven't really dug through everything, so we shall see. We'll get it all out on the table and then go from there. So hopefully you guys are having a good Friday. Hope you have a, a good uh, week in general. Let me clear some space out here so I can get my keyboard. So there we go. Uh, our subpoena guy, uh, yes, your package did arrive. I, since I didn't have the Friday stream last week, this one was going to be last week. Yours was going to be this week. Everything just got pushed a week. So that's what's going on. Uh, yeah. So we have a, a pile of things wrapped here in paper. We've got the chassis here. Uh, with a 3D printed battery tray in it. It's a metal chassis that's basically just a, a direct replacement for a capper chassis, I'm told. Um, we'll go over that. We'll go over that in a bit. In here, we've got uh, the transmission and a dig, and it's all assembled already. So, hold it. No, Nic yes, Nicole. Not, no, Nicole this week. She'll be back. Well, let's see. She'll be back next week. I was trying to think of what next week was because uh, next week is actually when we get the cat. So I w I'm flying down to Arizona next week to pick up our new addition. Sookie's cousin. Something like that. Another Cheeto, but a boy. So. This is the uh, transmission setup. This is a VP transmission kit. So a full, full Vanquish transmission uh, with a VFD or VF VP Hertz dig on it. It's got a UC fab. Let's see if this works. Ah, is it smooth or is it jumpy? A little jumpy. Uh, it's got the UC fab rear dig servo mount on it. And a little Savox uh, shorty. It's jumpy again. I don't know why. <clears throat> we fixed it the last time and then it's doing it again this time. So Savox shorty servo. Ron Starner. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, we've got... What do we got here? These are the Pitbull Chronic Shocks. I used these on the last build that Brian sent um, on there. So we're using those again. What length are these? Mm. I know, I thought it says, I don't know. They look longer than 90, but we'll find out. And then we've got a UC Fab Sway Bar set. I imagine this is uh, kind of one of the like universal sway bar arms. They're super long. So I imagine that they still fit, but gray matter fab. Thank you, sir. Probably go fast <laughs> if it was not in a Capra. I hate working on them. The Capras are quite a pain to work on. I very much agree. So in this little bag, we've got some carbon fiber side pieces for the skid plate. So these will go on the side there. I believe that this is all, I believe this is a UC Fab skid plate. 
Uh, this all looks familiar to that, so I believe that's what this all comes from. They're 100 millimeter shocks, Brian says. So yeah, that, that seems right. So UC Fab there. Got some incision drive shafts that we'll be using. We've got an incision link set, mainly assembled. I see a couple links that aren't. I don't know what those or why or why not. Maybe they're on the axles already. We'll find out. And Spectrum receiver and a Dean, like an intermediate Dean plug with two JST outputs. So I'm guessing that we're gonna be using a direct power servo for something. So then we have some, this is an assembled front axle. So, and that's, yeah, the steering links are already on here. So that's why those weren't done. So uh, Vanquish front offset capper axle. Uh, we've got some aluminum knuckles on it from GPM. We've got the Vanquish axle shafts. Everything's assembled already. I assume we're running stock ratio um, in the bringing pinion, and I don't. I'm not sure exactly we can uh, what we've got in the portal boxes there, but already fully assembled there with the VP servo mount on top as well. I'm guessing this is a rear axle. Indeed. So. So full Vanquish rear axle as well. It's the rear axle is centered like stock. Uh, so nothing, nothing uh, crazy different there. It does have Vanquish clamping hexes on here, both front and rear as well. So little thing to note there, but everything else is in place. All the hardware is already in all the places and everything as well. Should make things go fairly quickly in that respect. So we got that. I'm guessing this is all of our electronics. So yeah, we've got a direct power servo, Holmes SHV 500 V3. So that's why we had that adapter there. Make that all plug and play. VP servo horn sitting inside. And yeah, nice Holmes all billet case set up. And what do we got in here? One of these got to be motor and ESC. There's our motor, Castle Slate motor in a, let's see, 1900 KV flavor with some, Castle always has really long leads. It's one thing that could probably stand to be shortened in this, in this chassis. And, oh, little guy, Castle Mamba Micro X. Yes, Micro X with the uh, sensor cable and the, let's see. There's that part of it. I'm trying to think. I don't see the sensor plug adapter though. So back side inner question mark. Okay, that's okay. So um, we may be missing the, I can't, I think that this, I'm gonna have to remember, but I believe that the uh, Mamba Micro X, you actually need the little adapter, the short little adapter plug to go from this to the sensor cable, unless this is one of the special Holmes ones, which I don't think that it is, but we'll confirm. Uh, what do you think about a 2700 Polar Pro stubby for a bomber? Um, if I was gonna go, I like the Polar Pro, I like the 2700, but in a bomber, I wouldn't go stubby. Um, 
Those are big cars, big tires. I think that going full length is a better way. Go with a regular one. Uh, here, what's, what's Brian say? Must be in the box. Oh, here at home, that is. Okay, that's fine, Brian. Oh, wait. Maybe I should have just looked a little closer. It's actually just, uh, it's actually just tucked underneath. <laughs> Could have swore I didn't see that. <laughs> nope, it's there. That's always the thing on the micro. Every time I buy one, I forget to get that and I end up having to steal it out of something and then replace it. And I just didn't see it when I had it flipped that way. And already done. Brian already got what was needed. So he was ahead of us. So yes, um, what else we got? We got a bag here of some panels. Good grief, Josh. Yes, you're, you're welcome. Just making Brian sweat a little. So spare time hobbies, body panels. These are 3D printed panels. I'm get, obviously they must be specifically for this chassis. Brian, Brian knows his parts list. So uh, it's a two color print. The print is nice. Like it's a nice quality print. So um, two color print, got some detail in it. We'll probably wait. We'll open that up once we get, once we get to it. I'm gonna set electronics aside for now, since that's the... Oh, and then we have one other thing here, which this looks like uh, electronics mounting tray, something along those lines. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Okay, getting all that out of the way. Let's start by kind of getting our base assembled, and then we'll go more closely over the uh, chassis and stuff when we get once we get to it. So Nicole is is not here with us. Otherwise, I would she would do a better job of watching comments, of course. But I'll do my best to to handle both sides of a build and comments. Right, I'm not so. Just got to refresh myself. Uh, the UC Fab skid plate, it's got these link plates that go over the side, but you actually need to have access to this side to put these long set screws in through to capture the lower links. So we can't technically, well, we can't put both sides on. We could put one on, but we'll wait. How much does all this cost? Well, I have not done the math on this one, but if I was guessing, uh, no, no, I didn't just mean, probably everything here, I'm guessing there's $2,400 worth of stuff, $2,400, $2,500. So, um, a substantial, a substantial parts list for sure. Here we've got Motor mounting screws, we'll need those. I do not see a pinion. A, a pinion is the only thing that's not on the motor already. I have plenty of pinions though. So, uh, yeah, now I'm guessing at that, at that number, but I, I'm guessing I'm I'm within an order of magnitude. <laughs> so we're going to start bolting this together. Rich, at least thanks for checking in. You know, that's that's what counts. Stopping in, saying hello, then leaving. That's all I do on math stuff too. Right. Lock tight where necessary. It does feel weird to be, build these kits on Friday nights without Nicole here, though. Hmm. Small amount of Loctite on the motor screws. Not a ton, but just a very small amount. 
don't have to do it, but on the motor at least. But I'm not going to tighten them all the way because I still need a pinion. I'm late. Where's Nicole? Yeah. <laughs> Josh, is that a low seed drag car on the show? No, that is a Kyosho Phaser. So it is the 69 Camaro body, but much smaller than the low seed drag car. Brian said, uh, Brian just, he gave me the math. This is around 2,300. So what did I guess? Did I guess 2,500, 2,400 is what I guessed. So yeah. Let's see. And... Brian, I didn't see a pinion, so I'm putting a 13 tooth pinion on that I had. Who knows? I could have left, I could have missed it in the box, but for now, I'm putting an incision pinion on. Okay. This has got a 52, 56 tooth spur gear on it, 13 tooth pinion. I probably could do the final drive math once we get to that part. Now, this isn't necessarily just what a really nice this is by no means just what a really nice capper costs. This is just going with, you know, all the parts and a chat and a, I think this chassis is around 640 bucks or something like that, if I recall. And like I said, we'll get to the chassis here in a bit. So I covered that this is a Vanquish transmission and everything, you know, on a UC Fab skid, but obviously this is not a typical Capra, a cap, typical Capra setup. The Capra has its own special transmission, special, it, well, it's special in its own way. It's a terrible transmission. Uh, while it does have dig, like this one also had added, it's got a terrible gear ratio. It's kind of a pain to just work with and set everything up it's i don't like it at all as you can probably tell uh in my own capra i actually went this basically this exact same way uc fab skid vanquish transmission vanquish dig and that's the the route that i thought was was my preference also the problem with the capra the normal capra setup is the ratio is just it doesn't have enough reduction so it, uh, it suffers in that way. I'm just going to make sure that I choose the proper links. And yes, okay. I've got those. I'm gonna get them put on the skid plate so I can get the sides of the skid plate put together. Nothing a nine tooth pinion. Yeah, I mean the nine tooth pinion's kind of okay. It still doesn't really get the ratio right, and it's still just not a great transmission after that. So it's just like, I changing out the Capra transmission was like, if I'm building myself a new Capra tomorrow, that is the first thing that I'm doing is removing the stock Capra skid plate. We are. Definitely not doing that by hand. Changing the wrong thing. Just pull the battery out rather than just grabbing the new tip that I was needing. I don't know. 
I think it's just a screw. That's okay. <laughs> the dig is absolutely horrible and useless. The the capper dig also bad. Yes, another thing that the stock dig. All right, I'm putting the that set screw halfway in first so I can get the so you don't have to try and hold both of them. Where's the other two? Let's leave them here. Kind of mixed them up. So lower links are on. Now we can put the carbon fiber side plates onto the skid plate. My Capra doesn't like those negative comments. <laughs> uh, when are we going to see the custom one-off chassis? Which, which one are you discussing? Is there one that I... I don't know. I can't remember what one we're talking about. Any recommendations for a new basher? I have an old, oh, bashers. That's not my, not my best area. Is that pin a little loose? No, it's in there. Just making sure. The cheap cage. Oh, now that wasn't going to be a whole cage video. That was just going to be some fabrication tools. And I'll probably put something together, but it will not be a full cage because that is a lot of work. Um, but still. Did we ever find out what was on the top shelf a few weeks ago? No, I have not showed anybody what's on the... Well, I haven't showed online what's on the top shelf. I, I did show the moderators in there because they had a pretty good idea. But I have not showed the rest of it. So I'm just getting these rod ends tweaked on angles so that the... Things are all going the right way. I just finished watching Wednesday's show. The Willie jokes were fun. <laughs> yes, uh, I did not let... I had to keep Matt going on his... Uh, we're going to loosen that one up later. Looks like it was a little tightened. Okay. So all the lowers are on. Now we just need to, while we have it out of here, we're going to do the uppers. So I can work with a little bit of space. Because things tend to get cramped really fast in a Capra. Which moderator needs money the most? <laughs> now that is a messed up comment. Josh might trade my doesn't win for a Mojave. You know what, Steven? If you won 
felt, I think I said this to, I think I said it on one of the lives, like whoever ends up winning that, I'm going to try and buy it back from them anyway. I would gladly buy you a Mojave so I could keep it. <laughs> the Mojave is, if I was buying a basher today, like I wanted a new basher, one that I don't have already, I would go buy the Mojave. Like that, Matt and I had been talking about it forever. He finally did it. I, the only reason I haven't is just that I don't drive my bashers enough for me to go buy another one. Oops. And I just bought the Arma Limitless that I'm actually pretty excited to, to go drive because I think that that's going to be a, a good time. Even though it's only straight for a few seconds at a time, like to me, I think that that's still just going to be a lot of fun. Brian did so much pre-assembling that we have made quite quite a bit of time already for this live stream. 30 minutes in. Drive train assembled. Build a Mojiton. That is a Mojave Creighton combo. That sounds odd. One screw that's the opposite way. How would you go about designing printing a motor cover that would fit the trail king? My only worry is the motor is going to be a four banger instead of a V. I mean, honestly, as far as how you go about that, you just start measuring and start drawing. It's, you know, I, I had a, I used to do the Sunday live show, STL Sunday. All the videos are up though. Like if you wanted to go see some of how I, tackle a project you can go watch some of those old streams there's like 32 of them each of them a couple hours long so you can go see but it's not a super simple project you got a lot of details to add Sick. there we go links on let's uh let's start bolting up some axles and shocks, really, I guess, since we need to. Since they share. Now, like last time, I think we're going to leave these. Brian, do you want me to fill these shocks or not? Let me know. Last time we did not. This time we put oil in. Can do. Can do, will do. We have the Traxxas carousel. <laughs> do you have a preference? Um, I mean, slow crawling like this thing is going to do. You, you want 80 weight. Uh, can where are we at 80 got it so the pitbull shocks are an emulsion shock so we just need to make sure we have enough room that they don't over pressurize when the cap is on they also have a very large diameter shock shaft so they displace a pretty good amount of oil. Okay. I think nailed that one on the first shot. Go, come on. Uh, 
I spoke a little soon with nailing it. Maybe a little full, but that is okay. The Pitbull shocks are nice. They uh, smooth and they hold oil pretty well. Fairly easy to bleed. Eighty weight slows them down a lot. Okay. We'll fill this one a little less. I'm about two millimeters up the threads. See how close I got that time. No, still overfilled. <laughs> it's okay. We don't have we don't have grease and stuff to. We don't have to build the axles, so we don't have grease to get all over everything. What are your thoughts on a Holmes Hobbies 2500 revolver motor? Uh, it's a good motor. I don't, I don't know what you're putting it in. It, you know, of course, that all depends, right? For, yes, hit the like button if you're watching. Billy Mac. Thanks. For, <laughs> thank you, sir. So let's drop these in the lower. Yeah. No Nicole, no Sookie, no like. Uh, you know what? That is valued, valued, valid argument at least for once. Mike J. I'm new to the live show. Where is the freaking button? Uh, so if you're looking at the live chat, you actually have to close the live chat for it to uh, give you the option for the like button. If you're on mobile, I, which I assume that most people are. I don't know why. I just assume so. Little Loctite on this side because the lower link screw on the offset side of the axle actually threads into the third member rather than into a lock nut just because of how tight tolerances are. Go. Right, so got that. We do need to put drive shafts on at some point. So might as well do that before everything starts getting in the way. Hey Josh, I had a question on running TRX4 axles with the VFD transmission. Wanted to see if you could help me out. Well, I think I probably saw your question the easiest the time that you didn't ask the actual full question. So if I see it, I'll try. Otherwise, probably best you try and message me. So we are, it's hard for me to see all, I don't purposefully miss any comments. I just only, I just look up, read a random comment when I have, <laughs> When I have a moment, I don't have to pay as close attention to. Spinning the shock carousel. <laughs> ben, Sookie's brother fun. <laughs> uh, does, 
Does my heart good to see you get all oily? <laughs> God. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Ben. Yes, I fly out on... It was going to be this Saturday. We postponed it since I had been sick. I postponed it a week just to be careful. So I fly out next week to pick him up. We are pretty excited. All right? Yeah, so he is going to be... The only problem that I am nervous about is that he is going to be much bigger than Sookie's brother, than Sookie. Like a lot bigger, double her size. So that could get interesting. I'm just, I can only imagine, you know, Sookie's already in here stepping on things. And if he steps on a shelf, it's coming down. I'm gonna readjust this link. Yeah. Like a small dog in a cat suit. Yeah, but a small dog that can jump much higher. So, uh, like 22 to 26 pounds or something like that is the expected size which is quite large quite large uh savannah, yeah, savannahs are huge the uh savannah would be bigger though but savannahs are also a little wild and uh we had actual bangles before and honestly, like I, I can't, I can't deal with that again. They're, they're too crazy. Like they're just too destructive. So they absolutely dominate everything. So the Cheetos are kind of the best, best mix of like a normal cat, but looks cool like a Bengal. So it's, uh, yeah. So that's the, that's the deal. That's what, that's why we really like these Cheetos and their health is better. So we've got that. Now let's do these rear shocks before we do I have a 90 pound greyhound. He loves to sleep a lot and I've always heard that about greyhounds, like world's fastest couch potatoes. I've been around a couple of, what are the miniature greyhounds called? Are they just called miniature greyhound? I thought they had like a fancy name that I don't remember. Pretty sure I under, underfilled that time. Uh, I don't know. I don't think that I did actually. Just a tiny bit of seepage. There we go. Whippets. Yes. Whippet. Been around whippets. And actually really liked them. My Nicole's, one of her best friends, they had one. Or have one still. Just so nervous. And, and it got... It got like the dog form of alopecia where it like started losing all of its hair and started going off. <laughs> it was, <laughs> but it was always so cold. Anyway, it like took a nap with me on the couch one day. And when I woke up, I thought I had killed the dog because it was sleeping like underneath me behind, between the back of the couch and me. And I, I absolutely just like almost lost my mind. And it was just, no, I was just trying to get warm. 
just absorbing. I overfilled again on this one. Come on. I overfilled, but only barely. So, yes. 38, that's... Are those axial shocks? No, these are Pitbull Chronic shocks. They're good shock. They're one of the most expensive scale shocks that I am aware of. I think they're about a, they're like ninety bucks a pair. So, but they're a nice shock. They're built well. Feel looking good, feeling good. Right now, I didn't add. I wonder, Brian, did you leave uh, what gears did you put in the portals on these? Are they stock gears or did you run standard rear overdrive front? There we go. I guess you sent me a parts list of things, I have not looked at it all that close Josh uh what is the goldest wrench that comes with the, oh it's for it's for adjusting the collars and the like the top collar and all that and the 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 shock cap it's got the Smaller one for the shock cap and the larger one for the spring collar. So you could use it like a coilover wrench on a real car. If you've ever done that, massive pain in the ass in a real car. Rears are underdrive, front overdrive portals. Gotcha. There's the shock. Okay. I've got a, uh, we worked on a ripper a few weeks ago for well, a few weeks ago two months ago. I don't know everything. It's been a while. Um, but I might work on that on Sunday again, because I've got a back then I, I worked on a battery tray for it or battery electronics, electronics tray. And that I need to get that in there and get that one. Son of a attach the upper link instead of the lower link. So, anyway, if you guys are going to be around for the Sunday stream, I think that is what we're going to be working on. When everything's on the bench here, just like this, it's so easy just to grab the wrong link. We've all been there. Just a lot more handy to do it on live video. Of course, I could just not say anything and just like keep wrenching and just look like I'm working on this one rear link for way too long. What are you, what's the ratio? Ooh, I'd have to 
get out the calculator and start calculating all of that. But if I was to guess, if he did a 10%, he's probably at around a, I mean, the actual like overdrive ratio is probably in the 20 to 25% range, if I was to guess. Around 10 with the rear underdrive ring and pinion. Oh, I'm going to put some Loctite on that one. Take that back out. In the VS410 chassis without force or grind. Oh, sorry, I can't. I didn't see the first question. Quick question. I noticed incision rod ends don't fit. Oh, and it, uh, it, it kind of depends on when, uh, you know, it's, it's basically just how plastic grows or shrinks. Um, so it, they can be tight, but it's either make them, make them uh, kind of at that width or, you know, and then as things, if it shrinks in the mold, then sometimes it can be a little tighter, but and it depends on when you, if at what point you assemble them. Sometimes if you have it already in the chassis, things can be kind of pressing against it. Like when you tighten the front cross braces on, like if you do it before you put the cross braces on, usually they go in there a lot easier. So, so, all right, we've got drive shafts left still. Let's see if we can fit those on without anything tricky. So let's see. Come on. There we go. Uh, okay. So the issue that I've got with the rear drive shaft right now is that since we have a dig in here, um, the rear drive shaft is, is a little bit too long, so it's binding up. Now the front drive shaft is technically shorter, but the front should work in the rear and the rear in the front. So I'm going to disassemble the front drive shaft and move it to the rear. And I think that I only, yeah, I only need to do the female side. The male side is the same on each of them. So no need to take off both sides, just one. So I'll pull that off, put, and try that in the, so that should give us a, yeah. You can tell the length difference there of the front and rear shaft. Normally in the front of like an SCX-10, you run the short one, long, the opposite. You can just swap that in this situation in case you ever run into that. And you should be golden. Oh, Dale C. I see it there. Uh, will Sookie's brother be called Dom, short for Dominic Toretta? Does Fast Eddie make drift MST jet bearing kits? Couldn't find anything. Oh, uh, that's a good question. So I actually have a list of the Super Chat stuff up on the side and I just didn't see it come in. Um, I don't know on the MST stuff because I haven't done a drift kit. I know he has some drift kits because I had him do like a Sakura D3 at one point when I had it. Um, but it's probably just one of those ones that you just have to like send an email so they'll put it on the site and get it figured out. They'll usually do that pretty quickly. And I like the idea of Dominic. There's a couple of other names we had. Uh, swirling around but nothing has been decided yet okay there we go f charge jordan uh hey man what's up bro uh up for a cameo style happy birthday shout out yes happy birthday lol seventh birthday party tomorrow happy birthday seventh birthday 
Seventh, seventh is a pretty good one, huh? I, like, I think they were all, they're all pretty good, at, you know, until, uh, I think after you hit 18, everything, you know, starts getting a little kind of downhill from there. Happy birthday again. Right. So yeah, we uh there's been a number of uh oh crap, what was it? Uh of name options we've talked about. I kind of like Nicole had come up with Chief, which I thought was a good one. Kansas City, just a good name in general. There you go. So that's one I like. And then she had a couple of other ones that were in line with Sookie and very true blood style. She had said Lafayette because that's a an, damn it. Another true blood character, but it's kind of a harder, it's a harder name to yell at a cat. <laughs> So, yeah. Have, you have to figure out how you're going to yell it when you're pissed 65% of the time. What are you eating? <laughs> well, Sookie already took screw liquor and shithead, so what's left? <laughs> oh, there's plenty of others. Okay. So, let's... So we've got our whole drivetrain ready to go. Shocks, links, axles, drive shafts, transmission, all the length of wires that we need in case we want to run the, uh, you know, speed control on a trailer. Is there anything else we need to prep? I don't think, oh, we could put the servo on. We'll do that. I second Lloyd. Oh my God. Who said Lloyd the first time? <laughs> so, we're going to leave the servo horn off for now, at least. Wait till I get that all centered and powered up before we... Get some. Screws in place. The all aluminum case on the Holmes servo. Sure. The whole front axle, let's see. The only thing plastic on this entire front axle is the four rod ends. <laughs> I guess if you count the other four on the links, that's it. Everything else is billet. <laughs> Name him Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's I don't I don't hate that. MST RMX drag build for a monthly mayhem. Do it. Drag drift car to drag car, huh? I could see that. That's not that's not a bad one. Kind it's in the right spirit, you know, it's the opposite of what it should be doing. 
Did anyone see the Bobcat video where it jumped on the guy's wife? He grabbed it, threw it up. Yes, I did see that video. And yeah, he like launched it. It looked like a, a, you know, a comedy skit where someone like launches a fake pet. But yeah, and then he pulls on the cat and or pulls his gun out to shoot it. <laughs> like crazy. Ripper the cat. No. No can't do that. Okay, I think that's all we need to prep on this side. I think that we've got everything else done. So now we've got the chassis. And again, this is the uh, this is a super shafty chassis. It's a it's a milled chassis um, in the kind of like the the ripper was in a way. Um, this one though, it's only the side panels that are milled. Like the center of the chassis is just regular round standoffs. So uh, there's a lot less to it as far as that goes. It's just, yeah, it's just six round standoffs to do the two sides. Um, whereas the Ripper has like milled center sections of the chassis as well. So uh, not as much to it as far as that goes. But basically this is a just a capper replacement chassis. Take and swap over to it. And like we said, this is the chassis on this one is about is six six hundred and thirty bucks, I think we said or six forty. So let's get a couple of screws started in it. So it uses some cap head screws. Six twenty nine, yes, is the retail price. So I guess if I was playing uh, Price is Right rules, I would lose. Ah, $5.99 for silver. Okay. There, oh, there we go. Super Shaft is here. So, yes. A little less expensive for a... I assume it's either a clear anodized. I assume it's just a clear anodized. All right. Two in. Flip it over. And we've got. I was cheap and bought my two and so yeah Brian had said that he had already done one of these and he had was putting together a second one if I wanted to I was like sure why not why not good chance to put hands on one I'll put, Brian sent me a full parts list for the build. Um, and I linked in the description below a link to my website. And on that link is where I will copy the parts list that Brian sent to me. I didn't do it beforehand. I was running out of time getting work done. And then just, then we started the stream. So. Uh, it will get updated with all of the proper info, but it'll be after the stream. So, all right, let's double check the length of screws we need for these. Make sure that, oops. couple millimeters short. The one screw size that I'm getting short on, let me see if I have more. Yes, I have more. Good news, good news.
Okay. No, this is a screw kit from something that <laughs> got most of the ones that I need. And I think I've got a whole package of that length, but we'll get there. So we're going to use a small amount of Loctite, not an abundance since it's going into a chassis. I'd rather have the screw go out than seize into something. And the shocks are on the inside, so we have to get it at a bit of an angle. Careful not to over tighten. There's certain situations where you don't want to, you want to be real sure you're not cross threading and real sure you're not over tightening. You see fab skids hard to get your hands on. Comp yeah, it can be there. You know, you see fab doesn't do huge batches of things. So you do run a little bit little bit more difficulty getting into a, a number of those parts. So. Okay, put both of those there. Well, I do see that I want to oh, right. cross threading. You mean free Loctite? Yeah, that's I mean, I guess it still would be for me. I'm like, ah, put it in the mail. Like, I don't know. I think it's tight. Hope he doesn't take it apart. Right. Okay. So we're sitting. Ooh. Brian, have you have you set this exact setup up before? Because we have a clearance issue with this rear servo. The rear the dig arm on the servo is up against the chassis. But so you can see right you guys can see right here and that is the furthest forward position it's right up against it so what i'm going to do instead is i'm going to take that servo off i'm going to drop it to the uh, bottom side of that uc fab bracket and i think that will clear i may have to move the the arm to the top but that's a pretty simple I think that should be a pretty simple fix. Except I can't get the servo horn, can't get the screws off because the servo horn's in the way. But Brian has a Phillips head screw holding the servo horn on. If this is an M3, we're replacing it. It is an M3. We're not putting that back in. And let's see, can I actually, it's a clamping servo horn, so I can't just pull it off. Makes it, we're gonna pull the linkage off. Maybe I can spin the arm forward. Uh, take out the center crossbar to get to it. Uh, I assume that this center crossbar is keyed. I don't know that it's not, but we should see. If it's not keyed, it should be, but I assume that it is. 
Yeah, it is. So even with the screws out, you can't just pull it out. You'd have to separate the two halves of the chassis, which is proper. Okay. So there we go. Yes, we are able to rotate the servo horn. So that I can then loosen the clamping. I was able to pull it off without having to pull the whole thing out. Good news for us. Good news. See if we can, even with this very tiny box end wrench or open end wrench, whatever, it's still quite hard to get to it. Oh, I'm not blaming Brian for being cheap for using a Phillips head screw. I assume it's just what Savox ships with their servos. I blame Savox more than Brian. Whoop. Throwing nuts everywhere. Okay. Good deal. All right. So, servo should be free to come out. We need some needle nose, though. Because I can't, I have to pull all the screws out before it'll lift, move. Right. <laughs> Brian, here's for the new servo screw. <laughs> we are also, while we have the servo out, since we're going to mount it on the bottom, we're going to trim off the little nubs that are on the top of the servo case. Gives it a flush area to mount. Most servos have something like that. Pretty good. I could probably use another new X-Acto blade since I have a, I have multiples now. <laughs> All right. Now, Let's mount this thing back in, but on the bottom. So. Tricky, tricky. Trying to hold a nut while pressing up and holding the servo in place. But I did it. Aha, first shot too. It's quite difficult to try and get my freaking meat hooks inside here. <laughs> That all right, all those are in.
We're just getting them started so I can use a box and wrench then. And never heard fingers called that. Never heard fingers called meat hooks? I feel like that's a common one. Meat hooks, booger hooks. Um, what was that was the one you always heard at like the the range. Keep your booger hook off the bang button. <laughs> okay. So now back to the box it. And all right. This should fix our dig servo clearance issue and the the UC Fab mount and the Vanquish servo horn are two of the lowest profile options, but that Savox servo probably not the lowest profile option. Might have been able to get away with it with like a S9551 or something, but okay. We are going to have to swap the linkage to the top side and let's hope that that works. I don't know. We might be back in a similar situation. Well, we are. Okay. Option B is if I have a So I'm going to put on a 25 or 24 millimeter horn because with the 20 mil, we need it to move a lot further. We might be able to get away with this with a 20 or with a 24 and less movement. Might be able to shorten the linkage, move the uh, arm forward more at rest, and maybe just build a small custom linkage. Come on. Okay, these are 25 tooth, right? Yeah, 25 tooth. 25 tooth. Make sure everything's loose. Okay, with a 25 tooth, I might be able to get away with the linkage under the arm still. Let's see. Dropped it. That's going to work. So. Swapping to the 25 tooth or 24 millimeter horn from the 20 millimeter horn fixes that issue. So we still had to have swapped it to the bottom so that none of the effort was wasted. Yep, yeah. that is. All we needed to do though. So I'm not tightening the servo down yet or cinching the uh, clamping because 
we still need to uh, making sure we have full throw. It looks like we do. If not, we'll have to adjust it just a tiny bit later. I think we're in good shape though. Hey, TGH, Team Garage Hack. How's the build going? Is, is this a direct kit to Chupra Swap? Uh, so the build's going well. A lot of this came pre-built though from Brian, which made things handy. Uh, this is Vanquish Axles, Vanquish three gear transmission, UC Fab skid plate. Um, Holmes Servo SHV 500 V3. We're going to put a Micro X in it. So it's pretty much no axial parts. Incision drive shafts. Let's check our drive shaft clearance. So, so close. Uh, so when we put, when we swapped the, uh, the drive shaft or the servo to the bottom there, you can see the drive shaft gets really close then. Come on, focus. Focus. Anyway, it's super close, but it clears just barely. We probably have a six sixteenth of an inch of clearance still. So worked out. Perfect little little swap as far as that goes. Okay. Hey. Uh, Darwin getting an Ender 3 for my birthday. First 3D. First 3D Sunday print. First one, do the lawnmower. Lawnmower was a good one. Ah, uh, TGH, thank you very much. Any hiccups thus far? Um, just kind of, you know, the basic things, how a custom build goes with, uh, you know, using this skid plate and this transmission, we had that servo clearance issue, which was an easy one. Um, everything else has just been, oh, and we had to swap the drive shafts front to rear since we added the length of the dig onto the backside of the transmission. We needed the front drive shaft in the rear, the rear in the front. Pretty easy to, to tackle those situations though. Okay. Brian sent a UC fab sway bar set and I don't see. I don't see where that is going. There's these two little nubs in the back, but those are not holes. They're, they're blind. So there's, they're not open on the outside. Um, I don't know how that goes on there or if that can go on there. There's obviously nothing in the back. wanted to get fancy, of course, we could make it make something later, but I don't know that it's going to just bolt on. Mark Carger, 50K just got lost the weeds, bubbly's all around. No, it's, uh, I'm actually super happy with how that thing is all sitting now because I, I ended up cutting up the cage from what I did in the first video and then redid a bunch of stuff out of carbon fiber and made it all extra fancy since I was just, since I'm kind of just waiting for the last stage of it now. Everything else is is in, I'm just super happy about it. So as soon as the body is back, we'll announce it and be, and then I'll try and buy it back from whoever <laughs> gets it. <laughs> Cause I ended up liking it quite a bit. Okay. Um, there's holes. There are holes for the sway bar, Brian says. Brian, where are these holes? There's extra shock holes, but they're, I mean, where are there holes for this sway bar? I am very confused. Hmm. See, on the, these things, you can see there that that's, the hole doesn't go through. Is it supposed to go through? Like right there. I could see that being a sway bar, which would make sense, but it does not. <laughs> that hole is not a hole. 
50k giveaway the orange tulip it is it no oh, no that is definitely the route that went in there it made it it's kind of what helped make the interior nice and tight to it and everything as well so yeah super shaft d says you have to grind a small flat spot for the arm slightly inboard oh oh so you don't oh, i see how you're I see what the idea. Oh, so you got to split the. So the idea is is to run it, cut that. Okay, well that's interesting. That is interesting. Okay, we can. We can handle that on this stream. We have time. I am going to have to run into the garage and grab my cordless Dremel. Ooh, that arm is quite tight on that <laughs> rod as well, huh? So that screw's not in it, just making sure. All right, we'll get there. Very, very interesting. Oh. Man, they could have made that drill size just one size up, but okay, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna run and grab the, yeah, in for some dead air. Seconds only. Seconds of dead air is all that it will take because I know exactly where it's at. I assure you. What else do we have that we need to get on there? We've got panels to put on, We've got an ESC to be set in there. No cutting. I know. <laughs> At least it's not on this. It's cutting on the uh, sway bar setup. So that will make things easier. Split the, yes, I have to split the chassis. I'm saying I have to cut because this sway, they supply you with a sway bar rod. And the sway bar rod is wider than the chassis point. So it has to be cut down to fit within that and be retained by the chassis. So that is what I mean by cutting. Duct tape it in, yes. So that's going to have to go there. Must, they must be running the sway bar to the upper links, I assume. I mean, getting it to the lowers would be quite ugly. And the lowers will work well enough. So, uh, let me see. Uh, whose sway bar is it? it this is a uh, UC Fab sway bar. So, it's a, it's a long one. Get out the spot welder. Get out the spot welder. Exactly. Uh, go get Nicole. She can chat with us. Yes. I don't, you know what? Pretty sure she's not making it on camera. Time me. Okay. There we go. I would have ran, but I had a roto zip blade in it, and it felt like a bad idea to run with that. Okay. Measure twice, cut once. We may...
while I do have more spring steel here, I'd rather not have to make Brian a new sway bar rod. So I'm going to make sure that I measure this properly. I'm going to put something in that recess. Let's mark it with tape. Oh, it's a pretty deep pocket. So we've got, we've got uh, four millimeters of depth plus the distance in between the uh, plus the distance in between which is come on there we go distance in between there is 104 what did i say plus four plus eight 112 millimeters is what length I have. Perfect. So, 112 millimeters. And this is just over 120 already. So I'm going to put this over the, oh, no, that's, wait, 110, 112, yep, got it. So I'm just putting masking tape over the actual area so that then I can mark it more precisely with a fine tip Sharpie at 112. Okay. And I have eye protection in here in case Travis Gilmore is in here, which we never know. He could be watching our resident safety person. And I am going to go up here and yes, I am going to mute you all while I cut just to save all of your eardrum. Ha, <laughs> Travis Gilmore is in here. <laughs> so I'm going to mute you for a few seconds. And we're back. It's a very small diameter rod. It's still hot. But there you go. Hopefully, that all worked out properly. So, the fun part is now, though, we have to remove all of the screws from one side of the chassis. Ever cut it twice and it's still too short? <laughs> Quench it and bubbly. We'll, we'll go ahead and reheat treat. We're gonna remove all of the screws in the chassis just so I'm not well, not all the way. The front, I'm only going to do about halfway. So, and loosen up the bottom as well. Audio. It's like we're watching an SVG stream. Ah. 
All right, we've loosened everything up. So I should be able, oh, missed the rear, rearest most. Yep, separating. We got them all, we got them all, yes. Am I missing one? No, I loosened that. Those, this rear one feels. Pull off the other side too. The screw flats before install? Yes, but I want to double check that everything is proper first. Yeah, this back one back here is just like wedged on or something. There's no screw in it, but it does not want to come off, and I'm not going to force it. So, but yes, I still need to put the actual flats in here, but I want to mock everything up first before I just cut the flats and call it good. Okay. So I can see as I press it together, this shoulder up here, I've got about a half a millimeter. So I think I need to take about a blade width off of this just to be, just to be safe. So rinse and repeat our previous muting you. I will remember to unmute, I promise. There you go. So, took a little bit off. Confirm again. Everything drops in. Yep. Got a little movement, which is okay. Definitely enough that I know it's not, it doesn't feel like it's coming out. I'm not going to say I know it's not coming out because who knows? <laughs> so next we need to get the arms fitted onto this though. We're going to, I'm just cleaning up the edge. Try and make sure it slides on. Man. Tell you what, that tolerance is a little, little too tight. Audio, audio's on. I can see, I have a great big audio meter. I do feel I won today. It's the tiny victories. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. Technically this should only stick out about four millimeters. No, that's not true at all. It has to clear the shocks, so. Got to go through a bunch. I'll mark them and move them around after I confirm that they're in the correct spots.
well, I guess I don't have to have both spots in, I can just tell. So I can technically go in ten, eight, ten millimeters. What in the actual gavel is that? This is the best tiny RC hammer you can buy for $7. This is from Harbor Freight, little brass hammer, and it's the best. I will never, I will never apologize for how much I like this little hammer. <laughs> Not kidding, I've used this hammer to death. <laughs> so good. One of my favorite tools. A little more. Are you drinking your bath water? <laughs> I will not apologize. Okay, so I feel pretty good. Uh, we're gonna go a little bit further in just to clear during travel. I freaking love that hammer. Love it. Okay, that is the distance we are going with the I can measure from, I think it's toilet water. Hmm. Tappy, tappy, <laughs> tap, tap, tap. None of your words, have hurt, none of your words hurt me. I know how much, I know how awesome this hammer is. 26.5 millimeters is where I need the flats. I'm gonna write that down so I don't forget it. I screenshot that. I'm sending it to Dan Davidson right away. What did I just say? 26.5. 26.5 millimeters. You'll all laugh. Go to Har Next time you're at Harbor Freight, you go find this little hammer set. It is like $7, and it's the best thing ever. 2.65 millimeters. Don't try and, don't try and confuse me. This is a millimeter of the world. Okay. So, two point six five millimeters, twenty six point five. Granted, we have a little bit of wiggle room, but 26, okay, we're gonna mark both sides. We need to make sure that we get the screw flats aligned to each other, which is always the hardest part. You know, when you're doing it in your studio rather than in the shop, so, okay. It doesn't take much of a flat spot. Especially with how tight those arms are on there already. Safety, safety third. Okay. We're muting again. Muting. Hold please. There we go. Unmute it. See? Watchmaker's hammer with six heads. It's $4.99 at Harbor Freight. Exactly, Bill. That, and it's a steal at that price. Okay. So, let's tap, tap, tap both of these. 
little arms back on. Too far. Perfect. Nailed it. Where's the other arm? There it is. Quack RC. Thank you, sir. Hey, man, that's an awesome looking. Well, this is Brian's, but it is a great looking build. Okay. I know hammering while the board is in my lap, not the best, but if I do it on the desk, everything gets way louder. Okay. Almost there. Trying to make sure I line up to my flats. Okay, we're in good shape. Confirm. Looks good. I'm happy with that. So, comes with some very long M4 set screws. Is that your pinion adjuster tool? <laughs> That is an everything adjuster because it's the perfect hammer for RC brass. So it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't mar out things too bad. It's not so heavy that you're just going ham on everything. Hey, we even got those lined pretty well. We're off a tiny hair. Adjust down pretty good. Make sure they're flat. Tighten them for all we can. Okay. So that's how this sits. And then these two ends get captured in the chassis. In on one side, in on the other, realign our cross braces. Okay, there we go. And Screw this back together so it holds our junk in place. Perfect. Now we're getting there. Give me a hammer and I'll hit my finger at least once, Alex. <laughs> I'll ask best, best crawler kit for 250 or less. Honestly, if you got a $250 budget shop used because you're going to find, you're going to find a better deal on a used chassis, a used crawler. Uh, you're going to find a, you know, a crawler that's got five or $600 into it. Maybe, um, versus if you go and try and buy something new for $250, you're going to get a car that is worth $250 and then, or less, you know, like 
find a used SCX 10 2. Like that would be, that would be what I'd tell you to go shop for. And you should be able to find a used SCX 10 2 RTR for 200 bucks if you're just shopping around. And last one. Okay, so sway bars in there. Man, it really feels like it needs some. It needs some bushings in there. <laughs> There's a. Feels like that is something that it should have. Should have had, should have used. Um, I'll look at that later. I've got some brass here that I can always turn down on the lathe to fit in there a little bit better. And I think these include, yeah, these links, these must be like Traxxas Jado links or something. So. Let's pull one of these apart. It comes with regular Traxxas Revo ends. Um, won't the steel eventually cut through the aluminum? I mean, technically, if you put enough hours onto it, yeah. Um, it, it it feels to me like it needs a it needs a bushing. So I think the I think machining a a quick brass bushing in there would be my route. Now, granted, that's effort, and I do think I have some brass stock here. This does not want to start, of course. going to do it by hand, but use the TGH one. All right. We'll see if these, I probably just pull off the other one with it too. Oh, they're, they're actual turnbuckles. So good to know. And let's see how that length works out. That'll do. That'll do, pig. There we go. Okay. Would a knuckle bushing work? Um, I actually have a knuckle bushing right here, but I think it's quite a bit too big. Yeah, now it's way too big. What is the blue tool? The blue tool is a Zerba tool, it's called. You use it for like, it holds a rod in for you. So normally I'll use it to hold one side and then this is the TGH rod end tool. It goes in a quarter inch drive. And you just zip links together with the combo. All right, so. Okay, we're gonna pull off the upper link screw and replace it with a longer one. In the end, there is going to be a number of little custom things about this, but for the most part, this is about as, call it, bolt together custom as you can 
get. Not, whoops, I already put Loctite on that too, right? I did. Brian said VP sway bar bushings work. Okay. Um, well, I have those. I thought those would be too big too, but I can double check. Ooh. Can we see the sway bar all mounted up once you get done? Yes, we can. Uh, that rod end is way too tight against the chassis and is gonna cause binding or against the axle, I should say. Being that it's only a sway bar rod end, I'm gonna try shaving down just a little bit rather than, it's not a lot, it's just because it, it clears, but just not well. Cutting away from myself, don't worry. Tiniest amount. Take a tiniest amount of flesh away too. Don't do that. Did I drop the screw though when I flung things across the table? I guess so. That's a different screw. I don't even know what that one can. That's an M2. Where did I find an M2? <laughs> hmm. All right, I'm grabbing another one. Benny Hill music engage. Perry G, thank you. Finally seen my Venom Creepers. Think I'm gonna buy something, selling my Venom Creepers. Oh my God, I think I'm gonna buy something made after 2008 this time. You know what, that oh, Venom Creepers, not an easy find nowadays. Are we more free? We have some movement at least. Okay, I think that is going to allow us some clearance not a lot but a little okay tighten this side of the sway bar up Moose Jaws, two white Russians in. Now it's time to paint. I hope you're painting something of mine because that makes it better. Everything clears. Everything's good there. I think these rot, these end links I'd probably, one thing I would probably do is go to, rather than this end link here, I swapped out the long rod ends for these short ones, but I think I would still shorten this thing about five or six millimeters, because at full stuff, actually, yeah, it needs it. It needs it about five or six millimeters shorter in here, maybe 10. It, it, it gets full travel before it does anything, but if you go both at the same time, it'll start to rub the cage, so. I don't think I have any of those set screws here. I'll check, but I will check. Which end is this? Correct side. Uh, it says, Oni, go back to the longer rod ends, connect directly with set screws end to endish. Uh, no, I think I'd still want, I think that actually those would be, 
if I did that, they would actually be the almost the exact same length as these. So I still want to use the shorter and use just a longer rod end, not a not so short that the, they're touching. But uh, considerably shorter than what is in there currently. When the hell is this pliers? I'm only I'm holding the link from spinning. That's it. And there's flat spots. So st still. It's a it's a tie rod, so it's got big flat spots. That's why I'm using it. Go. And this is a turnbuckle, so it's opposite. Okay. Where is my other pivot ball? I'll steal one out of the other ones. I already put it in. Eh, where you know? Want me to send you a turnbuckle wrench? I have them. They're just this small. What a pain. If it was a, if it was a long earth, no. Too much of a pain to hold one with a turnbuckle wrench at this scale. I've got turnbuckle wrenches, I think. At least I've had them in the past. Maybe I throw them all away. <laughs> uh, still doing the sway bar. Thought it was good. It was gone longer than that. What? Thought I was gone longer than that. Well, a little bit, but. It's pretty much done now. We've got the end links mounted up. And we have the last screw to attach at the axle. Oh, I know what I haven't done yet, though. I haven't done the part where I almost cut myself. I'm going to take it off so that I don't do that live on camera. If this wasn't live, I would definitely probably try and... I would probably have tried to shave this on the car. I'm taking like a millimeter off of the outside of the rod end. Since it's just a sway bar rod end, it's not under forces like a link as much. So I'm not as concerned about it. And it's Brian's. No. I would do this on my own just the same. Or I'd overcomplicate something to machine my own out of it. Blood is what we pay to see. <laughs> right. I mean, probably would do much better for my YouTube revenue. Granted, I don't. I wonder if I'd get like, demonetized for that. Hmm. Interesting. I haven't ran into that situation yet. I mean, we've seen blood in Nicole's eyes a couple of times as she's started to boil with anger at me. I feel like I want to space that out at eighth of an inch at the axle. may do that we will see so that's how the sway bar sits in there you can see it 
it just nests in each side of the chassis. I don't know why this doesn't want to. So it just nests in there, sits inside of the shocks like so, and then it, uh, you can see at the chassis or at the axle side, it's actually on the upper links just because that was the, the clearest shot to go in without ending up with links trying to go way outwards. But I feel like I want to add a little bit longer screw and just a little bit of a spacer just to get it pushed out a little bit more. And I think that I've got everything here to do that as well. So might as well do it right. Make everything run. So I've got these bags of spacers that I've collected over the year. That I found different places that were selling them at different times and At one time, Fast Eddie used to sell a bunch of them and he sent me a ton. Let's see. This one is all mi is mixed sizes. I think there's like three sizes in here, but either way. A little bit more Loctite. Nicer than the RC Speedy chassis. Uh, yeah, yes, it is definitely nicer than the RC Speedy chassis. I mean, I do really like a welded cage and I, I think that I see the, I see the, uh, the benefits of that. Um, this one, I mean, billet cages are cool for what, you know, for the reason that they exist, right? I am surprised to see that this is just six standoffs through the center. Like, I feel like that's a little bit disappointing compared to like true milled center sections or anything like that. Like, th that would be the only thing that I would say is kind of a, but, and also like, that's part of the triangulation of a cage. I feel like it should have had that at least. Um, but you know, it's a, it would make it, it would have been more expensive for them to make, which I'm sure is why they didn't go that route. Cause I mean, doing milled sections is, I mean, it's almost, it's probably as much as either of the two sections. So, you get, you would have significantly more into the chassis at that point. Okay. So I'm adding about a five millimeter spacer to each side. That's better. So now those two arms, these two end links are basically straight down. Before they had a little bit of a taper, which I didn't like. So, so I like that better. I'm going to get a shot at this arm though. There we go. Okay, good deal. Still need to get those end links, a shorter version of them, but the rest of it is where I'd want it. So we're in good shape. Does taper really affect performance? Technically, yes. 
because the closer and closer you get to the center point of the axle, the closer and closer you get to a zero, um, zero effectiveness. So you, you really want those things outwards. So, you know, technically the arms on the outside, you would end up with a more effective or easy to, to tune sway bar. Closer and closer and closer you get to the center, you get, you know, if it's right at the center point, for example, then the axle pivots about that and you get zero effectiveness. So there you go. It does matter. And it doesn't look good. So there. <clears throat> Okay, Brian also already mounted the wheels and tires. He's got some gold 2.2s here. So we're gonna throw those on just because it's easier for me to move it around the bench then. I didn't feel like in any of these were stiffer foams or heavier, so I assume that they can go anywhere. Okay. Stock foams, in them. okay. And I didn't feel any weight, so I assume that they're the same there as well. So it is an OCD deal, not totally OCD. It was also partially for actual performance. Then you can put your hand under it. Yes. <laughs> also true. Go. What tires are those? These are the Pitbull Berserkers. 2.2 Pitbull Berserkers. I've got these, I actually had these on my, they're on my Capra behind me. Um, and yeah, I like, cause they're a short 2.2. They're five and a quarter inches tall. So. Now we've got a bunch of shit in the way. Let's clean up the desk a little for a second. Don't think I'll be needing the calipers anymore. Just put everything away for a minute and then I can get back out what I need. All right. I feel slightly better about my workspace. Only slightly because it's still a disaster. Alrighty, so. Scrape it into a pile. So we have a few things. We have the, 
this thing needs to run a battery, which Brian has a Velcro battery strap up in the front. So I assume that that's where the battery goes. It needs a place to put the motor and ESC or the ESC. Now he's got these two trays here and I have to wonder if that is part of it. Do I wonder if these mount to the body panels. Let's open the body panels. So we've got, these are by Spare Time Hobbies. Bunch of tiny screws. So multicolor 3D prints and they are fit, they're this chassis specific, obviously. So now I do technically see some extra holes on here. Do they line up? Three, they do right there. So they line up on the back side like that. So I'm guessing that means we could. Hmm. I don't know yet. We'll see. I guess that's. I guess that's the route that they expect to go with this. thinking still put panels on first then mount the panels to the inside but if you do that it seems like the electronics are still a pain oh is that how it clamps no part i don't know we're gonna find out i'm gonna do it like brian just said but we're gonna see is this a Chupa Capra? That is what this is. I assume that the little extra wings on the roof go to the rear. Kind of odd shaped, but. Oops, hold on. Close. They're not perfectly lined up, but they're close. A little bit of a fit. Put the roof on last. That makes sense. I was just trying to get a feel for this thing. We'll, put, we'll leave the two screws on it for now. This is why Josh needs Nicole. Right, yeah, so I can I can keep staring at something and she can read to keep you all entertained. And then I don't miss things that may be pertinent comments, right? We all need Nicole. Those would be sex scenes in carbon fiber. True story, Ben. Carbon fiber makes everything better. I'll have to, uh, I've got the TRX six rebuild pretty much wrapped up. I cut a massive amount of carbon fiber last night. So these are 
3D printed flat, but obviously there's a little bit of a bend that has to happen on this front panel, so you gotta just slowly tweak it in there. Carbon fiber the fuck out of Ben's Woods Runner. <laughs> that was the plan. I was gonna try and do the first molded dash out of carbon fiber in that. And I made an attempt and it kind of worked, but then it didn't. And then we decided to go with the little screens and then everything kind of changed anyway, just to accommodate that. But I do still have, I've bought a lot of things to try and make my own carbon fiber stuff lately. So. And a metal set of barn dog fat. Ah, yeah, barn dog was what the ones that we put on that other one that you sent, Brian. What was, I can't remember what that whole number thing was on that thing that was like a Jeep. But the not a Jeep Jeep. Okay. So those are on. We're gonna pull off I'll pull off the roof for now so I can get to those inner things. Okay. Hold on. Getting quite warm in here. So these things, I can see how they line up on the inside. I see why they use these now since there's a crossbar in the way on the inside. So if you tried to do it without it, then Back side, black side inner. Yes, that is what it is. There's a question mark on there. I'm pretty sure that you are correct. How loud is that air conditioner? I'll shut the door if I have to. Or window, I meant. Shut the window. Yeah, AC is not as bad as <laughs> dropping pirates. There we go. Just kind of had to bend it a little bit. I'm running my NVIDIA broadcast software again. But if it's too bad, it's just getting really, it's got to be 85 degrees in this room right now because Nicole's not in here, so I left the doors closed. You guys can't hear that at all? Wow, it is really, really loud. All right. RTX is strong, but the AC is stronger. I could... Totally here. Hold on. There. I cranked up the RTX. We'll see how that helps. Sounds like a dump truck driving through a nitroglycerin factory.
I can hear the bugs. Let's see. Wow, that's a name. Yeah, no, it is pretty. The software is pretty good. It's uh, I just drag a little slider and it I turn up the strength. No more AC noise. Wow. So yeah, Nvidia Broadcast. What do you know? As long as you have a RTX uh, graphics card, you can use it. It's weird that my uh, that my graphics card on my computer is what runs my audio. Uh, these are 100 millimeter long chronic shocks from Pitbull. Okay. Can we see this next to my cap? Yes. Uh, I'll pull up the, well, my cap is still the, uh, what do you call it? RC speedy one. So those are in there. This is the biggest problem. These are way too long. These need to get cut down and soldered, I think, but not on this stream right now. C. B. You could run this in somebody else's crawler alongside of your crawler. <laughs> and he is running. Okay, let's get this. Now, the one thing I would worry about, well, I bet that this little Mamba X can run this simple little dig servo, because that's the, there is no BEC, or there's no additional BEC. So. If I was gonna do anything, I would go on a big wire diet on this car. Just shorten everything, make it the exact length that it would need to be. I'd get rid of the adapter and then just hardwire everything. But that would be like the only thing. That'd be getting to get picky about it if you were going to. Where did I do with, there it is. Plug our sensor in. All right. Sorry. AC finally off. I'm going to turn the RTX back down just so it doesn't make me sound so weird. But I hate to solder, Brian says. <laughs> that would be, I'm just saying, that'd be the only thing that I would look at doing is just, I'd cut these wires down to about this long and then go directly into that Mamba X micro x you know 
Or if you wanted to get crazy, get rid of the bullet connectors and go right to the posts. So I'm going to, I'm going to go right to double side taping it so that I can start cable managing a little bit better. might have wanted to do that before this point. I don't know. I kind of like getting to this point where you can get everything in place. You can decide on everything. And then if you need to, yeah, you have to pull stuff back apart. But it's nice to know exactly where it's going to fit. I mean, a lot of times with cars, you end up disassembling, reassembling several times to get it just all perfect. That's out. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Hiding wires, that's what the interior is for. Well, I don't think that there's an interior with this one. So. What we're going to do instead is creative wire bundling. And I also did not remove the switch. So I'm leaving that in here. I'm gonna tuck it down to the side for now. And that can get decided later. Can it fit a bomber interior? No, these are way too, way too small. But it could probably fit a Capra interior. Granted, you'd probably have to like zip tie it in or something. There we go. You, if you wanted to go crazy with wiring on this, you could probably spend four or five hours in wire shortening, you know, shortening every servo lead, uh, shortening the motor leads, uh, getting just absolutely everything perfect. On some builds, like, just what you got to do. You got to spend stupid amounts of time. We shall see. Um, yeah, and there, no, this car doesn't have any fans. Yeah, there's no. These motors don't run that crazy. That little Mamba Micro X. This car's not all that heavy either, so it's not gonna generate a ton of excess. So, yeah, it's just, the biggest thing is, is dealing with how much extra wire in this tiny little cabin. You're not going to be able to absolutely. I mean, we could go crazy and try and route it and loop it and hold it, but I'm going to say that Brian needs to go all the way with it and make it.
perfect. Even if he doesn't want to do all the wiring, he needs to dive in. Okay. And his receiver. Jesus. It's got an antenna like a like castle motor wires. I need to run a big old tube. It's like a all right, steering servo, one. One to steer, two to clear. Then we've got the ESC in number two. I'm gonna put the auxiliary for the ESC in three. And in four, the dig servo. I assume that Brian is running a four channel or better. Hey, Squint's Paladors, wire it, send it my way. <laughs> I'll wire it. There you go. You have to, uh, let's cut a piece of double sided for the rec receiver. This, these little spec, what's how many? It's a five channel spectrum S31 or SR315. Nice size receiver. I take it this is not one of the waterproof ones, or is it? Does not say. I'm assuming no then. Hold it off. We're gonna This is why he told me to put the roof on last, because it's still like working on a capra in a lot of ways. Which is my least favorite part of the capra. It's how much of a pain in the ass it is to work on them. Yes, you have to conformal coat these to make them waterproof. I know they have some of them that are, I just didn't know if this was one of them. Okay. more wiring to bundle. I'm gonna put the uh, home servo wire onto the upper link just to keep it all. One thing, that, the one thing I wanna protect against the most is keeping the wires out of the spur gear. Now, this still needs to have the uh, dig servo programmed and everything so don't just plug it in and go Brian. that's okay oh you can say hello <coughs> hello <laughs> that was the only cameo from nicole we get the distant hello Okay, I'm gonna do one more wire servo or whatever he calls zip tie for the servo.
dental picks also a great thing. <laughs> Too tight, you will be able to cook eggs on the casing. Ah, it's tight, but it's not closed. So it's it's uh, pretty available for airflow. I don't think you'll have too much problems with heat in these. Pretty typical for a Capra. It's like, and that's kind of the thing that gets you with these. Is like, you think you can work on them because they're all right there but it's just like there's a bar in your way, no matter which way you go. Right. Nutcracker sets. You probably have picks already just stored for next Christmas. Interest nut. Oh, God, I remember nutcrackers. I guess I forgot about them having picks. All right. Dig servo. Just getting that wire. This doesn't count as putting my hand under it. I'm working on it. So getting the dig servo wire just bundled up and my God, what an absolute pain in the ass. There we go. probably get the sensor wire bundled up a little bit better and needs to so yeah sensor wire needs managed and the switch needs bundled and this really needs to be attached too much wire too much wire If this build went any faster, then I'd do it, Brian. But the amount of pre-assembling you did was just about perfect. At first, I was just like, well, this isn't going to take very long at all. But I have been appropriately surprised. Granted, the sway bar, it took some fab and a little bit of cutting. No, no such thing as too much wire. Phoenix, you know damn well that that's not true. We have all worked on that thing that somebody, that somebody else worked on before you. Or like the worst is when they used all the same color wire. <laughs> like it's all red wire, the whole thing. Okay, let me put my spacers away. That. 
I'm gonna leave the cable ties out because we actually do need a couple more of those still. Try working on something full of wire and ooh, yes, working on automotive or well, Phoenix works on golf carts, so that's I still call that automotive. It's almost just like I feel like since it's a golf cart, people think that they can just get away with more, and it's probably even worse than just regular vehicles. Oh, right. So now I will grab the other one. So again, this is Brian's rig. He sent this to me to build. This is going back to him now that it's pretty much done. Um, this is that RC Speedy chassis that I did or had, uh, I bought, whatever. So the difference is, is that this one is welded, bent and welded. This is a machined cage. So you can tell the difference. These are actually running the same tires, both on Berserkers. This has got a hundred millimeter shocks on it. This has nineties. So this sits a little bit lower because of that. Now this one I had its own issues with. This is a $300 cage versus a $600 cage here. Now this one included panels. Obviously Brian bought these panels separately from spare time hobbies, but most of the rest of the build is actually about the same. They both have vanquish axles on them. They both, so both running VP axles, both have UC fab skid plates, three gear transmissions and digs. Mine doesn't have the dig in it any longer. I think I stole it for another truck. I don't really remember. Um, this one considerably smaller as far as the actual width goes, you can tell. I mean, if, a lot of times it can be hard to, to see things based on just camera angle, but you can see how much narrower this is than, than this. Now, this one is already a little bit of a pain for getting wire and stuffed in there. This one, you definitely would need to go the route of making sure uh, to get your wires to the right length, things like that. Um, so no, uh, no getting around that on something this tight. I did have this running. Now this thing does have a battery tray here and an electronics tray back here. So this one has a 3d printed battery tray up front, but it looks to me, that looks like Brian bought that. I'm guessing that he had that done maybe by spare time hobby as well. I'm wondering. Um, so I'm not, I'm not sure now, no way to mount a sway bar on this without some of your own fabrication. This one, you saw what we did. Um, you know, those are kind of some of the, the big differences underside. You're not going to see much difference. You're going to, these are both running incision links. They're both you know, other than the, the length of the shocks, like we discussed. Um, yeah, it's, they're both made to be bolt on capper chassis. Now this one, I discussed how my shocks have binding again, I'm running 90 mil shocks. So it shortens things a little bit. Brian did buy that battery tray from spare time hobbies. So a little extra still, but between these two builds, the biggest difference would have just been the difference in the cost in these chassis. So worth noting there. And you know, you can just tell the difference between, between two different styles. So yeah. Uh, why are servos opposite? Um, that's just a, it's, it really doesn't matter which way you set your linkage. Uh, you can put it whichever way you want. You just have to change which way you mount the drag link. So I put it one way and Brian put it the other. I did not put his servo horn on, which we could do. And 
And I've got two servo horns here. Oh, I took, I swapped him a 24 millimeter for a 20. That's why. So. Yeah. Um, we'll grab the, we'll bring that one. We'll bring that one back up here in a second after we get this all installed. Okay. I uh, estimated the center point again, Brian's radio and all that. He'll have to 100% set him, but I'm probably pretty close, probably within sub trim adjustment. We need to do a special on using the proper wire and connectors for the job. Oof. That, you know what? That would be one of those ones like you could do it, but then you would have 50 or 500 comments of people disagreeing with you. <laughs> you just be like, I use, I think you should use, what I've used and never had, that's always the one that I always like. The one's like, well, I've been doing it this way, never had a problem. Like, well, you sure? You sure you've never had a problem? You sure you haven't just been blaming other problems on stuff? No. Okay, what do I do with my Loctite? Damn it. Got it. Never do, never do what I do. Huh, that's, you know what? At least when people say that, you, you can be like, you know what? Good to know and thank you for our... <laughs> yes, there we go. So, servo is on as well. Could even maybe use a 24. That's eh, pretty close. Fatal retort. I'm an expert. Run as fast as you can. Yes. There we go. I think we've basically wrapped it pretty good shape went well brian excellent list of parts like we said these two are actually probably pretty similar trucks you know this one i think this one actually still sits a little bit proud of the other one i think it does what are we at here 200 and 10 millimeter roof height, 200, 210. Sorry. So they actually sit almost exactly the same. Yeah, 210, 210, almost identical, both of them. And for reference, Here is my stock Capra cage. So, it's, uh, well, 
it's considerably longer if you if you have the rears matched up. Um, it's The stock capper cage is about two inches longer. Um, the width has got to be pretty similar. Yeah, the width is almost identical. Brian, thank you as well. Appreciate the sending it out. It's fun to fun to put together. So width is almost exactly the same. Overall height. Pretty much identical as well. So, so yeah. Anyway, appreciate it. Hopefully, everybody had a uh, good time. Thanks for hanging out the whole time. We had a good crowd. So that's uh, that's gonna do it for my night, though. I'm gonna get my disaster of a bench cleaned up a little bit and call this an evening. So unless you guys have any questions, we can go, we'll go till nine o'clock, seven more minutes, just making sure you guys see if you have any other questions. Uh, let's see, put together a, oh, sorry. What does that say? Uh, put together a high ratio SSD training for this scale. No prep. Oh, for a scale, no prep build. I remember that. SSD train. That was the oddest transmission that they ever decided to do. So bizarre. I don't know why that was a, I mean, you find, you find other things like, oh, there you go. But such an odd choice for it in the first place. So, yes. Oh uh, yeah. Thanks everybody for hanging out. We'll see if there's any other questions before we wrap this up. I miss most of the night. Good thing it's on replay. I'll make sure and go through and adjust the freaking ads right away. I hate YouTube does. If you ever go back and like watch the replay of a live video. And if you ever notice, like if there's an ad every two minutes, like make a comment. So I see it because YouTube just does that automatically. And I have to go in and delete them all and then just put in the regular spacing. So that is never something I would do on purpose. I would never have a video with ads every two minutes. It's ridiculous so we didn't have a single dropped frame tonight that's can cats eat pancakes I suppose i don't see why not i feel like it'd be fine i'm not 100 sure though rourke Ponce, thank you sir thanks for joining still wearing the crocs not gonna lie all the all the time <laughs> we'll see you guys sunday for uh more stuff as well. Yes, if there are no sugar pancakes. Huh, there you go. Off build topic, uh, but do you guys make the RC videos use powered gimbal? Uh, I have, I do at times. I've got a Zion Crane 2 that I use for my SLR and my DSLR. So, or my DSLR and my mirrorless. So sometimes, yes. Uh, the question is, will they eat pancakes? Fix my 10 3 tonight while I worked on yours. Hey, what do you know? Uh, why not run Vanquish for competition? What do you mean? I, I do run Vanquish stuff in competition? I don't understand the question. Rephrase it. I will answer again. I have an SCX-10 with a 2500 kV motor revolver. Do you recommend Vanquish underdrive gears? Uh, uh, underdrive gears and, and in the rear axle. Sure. Absolutely. I'll give you a little bit, a little bit of an overdrive percentage. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm in, I enjoy running, you know, underdrive or overdrive percentage, however you want to refer to it. Traxxas TRX four G 500. Sure. Why not? You can make a four by four version of my TRX six go fast, which is, uh, The rebuild is basically complete. You can see all that, all that carbon fiber and all that titanium hardware. My new rear diffuser, all carbon. So sweet. So sweet. So much carbon fiber. 
<laughs> There's a lot of carbon fiber cutting and a lot of titanium hardware and a lot of money that went into it. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. Lots to do. That thing's going to be fun. Super looking forward to that run. I'm telling you what, com comparing the carbon fiber to the old version, that is the, uh, which I was happy with. It was fun and it looked good and it was, you know, I was proud of it. But now after doing the carbon fiber version, I'm like, oh, I'm like, this feels, this feels toy like and cheap. I'm like, <laughs> The carbon one is legit amazing. Amazing. So, yes. So, so looking forward to that. Is that tire delaminate? Yes, the, uh, the, that tire came apart in the end of the last video, but that'll get all new tires before the next attempt. Trex is going to contact you to release a version of that. <laughs> I'll send them that one. So, can we see the purple rig? Purple rig? Do I have a purple one? I don't know which one you mean. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother, do it for deal. Exactly. How thick is the carbon fiber? Uh, the bottom plate is 1.5 mil. Um, so... Just because this is what I've been working on last night and tonight, yes, today. Uh, so this is all 1.5. And uh, then there's some uh, 0.5 millimeter. Like you can see this portion of the rear. See like this little plate here? That curves. It's super hard to... This thing is such a big ass. <laughs> you can see how this thing like curves upwards like that. It's hard to say. Anyway, that is only 0.5 mil. And then these new sideboards that I did, those are only 0.5 mil as well. But I love, I, do, I love this truck. <laughs> so, uh, there's still a few things that I'll do and, uh, I'll probably, I'm going to do a carbon fiber front splitter, but yeah, that is, yeah, going to be cool. And, uh, I did a bunch of carbon fiber work underneath as well, but we'll get to that. How to make a brick fly. Exactly. All right. Nine o'clock. That's it. We're out of here. Thanks for joining everybody. We will see you next time. But first, let me thank everybody. Um, Ron Starner, Gray Matter Fab, Scale Crawler Fab Shop, Brian Sherwood, Dale C. F. Charger, Jordan F. Team Garage Hack, Darwin Bonky. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Mark Cargill. Quack RC, Perry G, Slow Don, um, Squints Paladoris, and Rourke Ponce. Appreciate all of you guys. Thanks for the support tonight. Much appreciated. Had a good time. We'll see you on Sunday for the next stream. Later, everybody. <laughs>